It is a beautiful day, but in true Northern Ireland fashion, it is forecasting rain. Let's talk about low and slow. Hi everyone, James Mackay here from Barbecue.com and welcome back to yet another episode of Barbecue Know How. In today's episode we're looking at the final part of this little like mini series on how to cook on your barbecue and we're talking about low and slow, the holy grail of barbecue. The low and slow barbecue has been made famous by the American pitmasters and their massive offset cookers cooking briskets, pulled pork and ribs for hours on end. Uh, so it can be a little bit intimidating for beginners but with a simple kettle barbecue or a gas that we're going to look at today uh, you can do low and slow at home, it doesn't have to be complicated, there's just a slightly different setup to how you would cook indirect or direct. So before we start, you might be asking why you would want to cook your food for such a long period of time, uh, whenever surely you could just raise the temperature and cook it a lot faster. However, the likes of brisket and pork butts, uh, there's a lot of fat and connective tissue inside those meats. So cooking things low and slow, you cook them at a low temperature, which allows those uh, fats and connective tissues to melt out of the meat and uh, therefore making them a lot more tender. If you were to cook those cuts uh, hot and fast, they would just tense up and become very hard to eat. The different ways to set up your kettle barbecue for it there are really three methods the first the first method would just be to add fuel uh, or add a smaller amount of fuel to your barbecue to achieve a lower temperature and then just replenish that as it starts to die down but that's a very labor intensive way to control that heat especially if you're cooking for six seven eight hours uh, you need to watch the fire quite a bit the other two methods um, will give you a far longer cook time without having to actually look after the barbecue quite as much the first one is the minion method. Um, it's not commonly used in a kettle, it would be more used on the likes of the bullet smokers, but it involves having unlit briquettes around the outside and then adding a small amount of lit briquettes in the centre. Those will slowly burn their way out, giving you a long cook time. Um, in the kettle it's a similar idea, I suppose the barbecue pit boys made it famous of having a load of unlit briquettes at one side of the barbecue, they tip in the lit briquettes on top and then just control them vents to decide how quickly the unlit briquettes light. But the method we're going to look at today is the snag method which is most commonly used in kettles. So you would build a row of unlit briquettes around the outside of your charcoal grate, uh, add a few lit ones at the start and it'll burn its way around like a fuse, but it gives you a really long cook time, sometimes up to 12-14 hours, um, and it's a nice steady temperature the whole way through. So I'll move the camera over the top of the, the kettle now and we'll set that up inside and get it lit and show you how you would do low and slow in your kettle. Okay, so let's take a look at how you would set up the snake method then for doing low and slow in a kettle. Um, so cooking grates empty here, the first thing I usually like to do is to just tip in some of the briquettes and then that allows you to start arranging them. So we're going to go for a 2 by one snake method uh, which means there's two on the bottom row like so and then on the next row, you add in then a single layer of briquettes. So those will slowly burn the whole way out around the barbecue and uh, give you a nice long cook time, but there's not too many briquettes lit up at one time. So it, uh, it gives you a nice long burn, but not too high a temperature. So it's perfect for low and slow and extending that cook time without having to watch the fire too much. Once you have that set up, that's about half moon, uh, so we're going halfway around the kettle. 
um, we will put our lit briquettes at this section here and that will light like a fuse the whole way out round but over a number of hours so it gives you a good long cook time uh, if you want it at a slightly higher temperature this is usually good for giving you around 120 degrees celsius um, you can control the vents a little bit to get a little bit higher a little bit lower but if you want it more you can do a two by two method which is two in the bottom two on top uh, but for today i think this is uh, plenty to get the temperature we're looking for um, for adding wood then usually when you're smoking you only add wood at the start of the smoke so once we put our lip briquettes in here uh, we can add a chunk of wood to it you might possibly add another chunk uh, along this first section um, just so as they light round those that wood will catch and uh, let off smoke it's probably pointless adding smoke the whole way around here but that stage your food is usually seeding so it doesn't take on a lot of smoke so keep your wood chunks to the start of the, the snake and that'll give you the best uh, penetration of smoke into the meat so then to light your snake usually i'll use the little mini weber chimney starter with about eight or nine briquettes inside it and that's enough to get the snake going from the start gas out there it is still possible to do low and slow on your gas grills so my first ever brisket uh, was cooked on this very barbecue um, I'll put a photo up here on the uh, screen to let you see what it was like but uh, I found with the three burner spirit with the first burner on full and the other two off and then your food is placed at this side of the, the cooking grate that was enough to hold a steady sort of 120 degrees Celsius temperature um, so that's right in and around the area of low and slow uh, obviously if you want to go for a little bit lower and longer you can uh, adjust the burner down uh, trying to get a little higher than that you would end up having to put the center burner on uh, which to me was a little bit close to the to the food where it was placed on the grate so one burner on full um, and your food placed to the opposite side as far away from that as possible uh, that maintained that temperature no problem so the great thing about a gas barbecue is that once you set your temperature or set your dials and put the lid down and let it come up to temperature it will sit rock steady unless you run out of gas obviously but so if you want to try low and slow but the whole fire management aspect uh, intimidates you a little gas is perfect for it um, once you set it up it's good to go you don't have to worry about adjusting vents and managing the amount of fuel you have and what's lighting up this takes care of it all for you so if your first time out you feel more comfortable trying it on a gas grill then do it that'll give you an idea of timings as well once you're cooking something at that lower temperature how long it's going to take um, as I said my first brisket was done in this before I moved on to charcoal and then eventually on to a dedicated smoker so don't be ashamed if you're doing it on gas. That's how I started and moved on. So give it a go. Don't listen to the haters. As you can see low and slow is perfectly achievable on a kettle and really it's where most people start off uh, if you're buying your first barbecue you don't dive straight into a smoker you generally get a kettle because you can do so many different things on it and low and slow is uh, so easy to do with that snake method by all means you can try the minion method as well uh, it does work I have done it in the past but it's just not as easy to manage sometimes the briquettes can light up a little too quickly and you're having to shut those vents down constantly to try and maintain a steady temperature so the snake method will definitely make it a lot easier for you to manage that cook over a long period of time so now if you have a gas barbecue don't be afraid to do low and slow on it um, that's where I started my first brisket was cooked on a gas barbecue as I said so um, use it you can use that setup I explained and 
it, it works a treat. Uh, the brisket came out really well. Possibly not quite as well as it would have on a charcoal barbecue, but it's still accessible to you. So don't feel if you have a gas barbecue that you can't do low and slow because it definitely works. So if I had any tips for trying low and slow for the first time, uh, the first one would be give yourself plenty of time. It is called slow for a reason. Um, it can take hours, even if your cook is estimated to take six hours, it can take well over that or it might be done early. It's just one of those things you need to be willing to wait for it. So choose a day where you have very little else to do. Possibly if you're doing it for the first time, choose a day where you're not having to have food ready for a certain time because there is nothing worse than guests arriving and you're still hours off being finished and that just ups the pressure on you and you're more likely then to rush it and try and finish it early by ramping the temperatures up and it just doesn't work. Low and slow is slow. So keep that in mind. Try it on a day where you've very little else to do. You can just sit back, relax and watch the smoke rolling and then you're under no pressure to have it finished at a certain time. The second tip would be to not fuss with the barbecue too much. Um, you're going to be cooking over a long period of time, so once you get your temperature steady at the start, the snakes let up, you have your vents set how you like them, walk away and leave it be. You can check back every now and again to make sure your temperatures are setting roughly where you want them to be, but don't panic too much over having an exact temperature, as long as you're in a range uh, of sort of low and slow. So if you were aiming for 120, as long as you're sitting sort of between 115, 125, that's fine. Don't fuss about with the vents too much to try and dial in that exact temperature because it really doesn't make that big a difference. So once you have it set up, leave it alone. Don't open the lid because you're cooking at them low temperatures and the key to low and slow barbecue is a consistent temperature. Um, so if you're opening the lid, you're losing heat, you close it again, it takes a while for that to recover. So just leave it be, it cooks slowly, but if you can leave the lid on and let it do its thing, it will cook a lot quicker than you think. Last tip then would be don't be intimidated by it. Some people get a little bit worried about trying to manage a cook for 10, 12 hours, or they see the sort of American pitmasters with their big massive offset smokers filled with you know 10, 15 briskets. It's only food at the end of the day. Uh, try it out for the first time. We're trying something like a pork butt, which isn't overly expensive. Uh, you can try it out, it's relatively easy to do as well, but don't put yourself under the pressure of trying to get it perfect the first time. The first time you try it, it probably will be stressful. It was stressful for me and I think it's stressful for most people. So just relax, give it a go. Um, don't panic too much if your temperatures go up and down. Like I said, if you do it with a pork butt, they're relatively forgiving. Uh, if it goes wrong, just learn from the mistake and try it again next time. It's the only way you will master it in the end. So hope that's tweaked your interest enough that you want to give low and slow a try. Um, it is the sort of pinnacle of barbecue. Um, whilst it's nice to cook uh, direct and indirect and do roasting, low and slow is one of those achievements that when you perfect it for the first time, it truly feels like you have achieved something. So give it a try. Don't be intimidated by it. Just give it a go, see what happens. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll happily answer them in the comments section. And I've also left a link for a couple of articles I have on the website that might help you as well. But you can hit me on social media, uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Happily answer any questions you have about doing it on the kettle or the gas barbecue. So if you enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button along with the little bell to be notified of future episodes. And I'll see you in the next one.